Um, it's my pleasure today uh, to work with a series of co-authors, Lisa Coffin, um, uh, Guillermo Ponce and Lynn Seymour, who are with um, other, other long-term agro-ecosystem research sites like the one we have at Archbold. And also a huge shout out to Viv Slaughter, who's our GIS and data manager here, who do a, did a lot of the heavy work on the, uh, on the uh, analysis for this. I'm going to talk about ecosystem services in working lands. There's really an increasing interest. We've had some of it today that, uh, you know, grasshopper sparrows are doing well on working ranches. Greg's talk about uh, um, biodiversity on working ranches. And this is a sort of nationwide interest. How can we, uh, what are the values of ecosystem services from working lands as opposed to protected or uh, conservation lands? And then also um, this increasing interest in payments for ecosystem services. Are there payments that uh, landowners could be uh, open to that would help retain those services? One of the reasons this is so important is the enormous need to sustain and in fact intensify our agricultural food production while not having a diminution in the value of those ecosystem services. And the USDA has set up the long-term agroecosystem research network across the US and Archbold with our partner UF is one of the sites and one of the 18 sites active in this network. Um, Sarah's from Kellogg Biological Station, that's another site that's in the network. And um, one of the challenges is if you're looking at ecosystem services at a national or a continental scale, what are some of the questions with comparing across multiple sites and scaling up? So I'm going to focus today on some of those challenges and some of the approaches we've looked at. Um, and the, the different types of ecosystem services are broadly described as provisioning, that sort of food and fiber, supporting, you know, sort of fundamentals of life, soil services, biodiversity, regulating the big natural, natural um, cycles that control flooding and fire. And uh, what I'm not going to talk about today, the cultural services that we get from many landscapes, including working landscapes. And these are measured at so many scales, you know, obviously today at Archbold, we've looked at a lot of plot scale work. Um, some of these services might be measured at the scale of an enterprise, a farm or a ranch, you know, it might, that might be the level of production or provisioning being uh, provided. And then there's all sorts of scales that are can, uh, all sorts of services that can only be measured, um, you know, using things like remote sensing or modeling, if you want to scale up to a region or a an eco region, and even harder if you're dealing with human dimensions and cultural dimensions, which and economics, which I'm not going to be addressing today, but obviously are of huge concern. So the scales of measurement, how to scale up, and um, the different types of measurements. This is a lot to balance, and we're looking at uh, the two categories. They're often known as uh, trade-offs and synergies. Um, to what extent is valuing one ecosystem service, um, say increased food production, diminishing another ecosystem service and sort of, sort of soil health or um, sort of flood control. So looking at those trade-offs or synergies, where can you get two for one, both, both are providing synergistic values. Um, rather than dealing with this at a continental scale, um, a group of us in the Southeast USDA LTAR program, and that's um, specifically the Georgia site, universe, uh, the uh, USDA Tifton Gulf Atlantic Coastal Plain site here, and further south, the Archbold University of Florida LTAR site, and the regions that they basically represent. Um, we're looking at ecosystem services from both of these regions and then scaling up um, to uh, a series of incremental scales. So um, starting off at the first from the entire southeast, uh, we actually excluded coastal areas and there were various decisions about how to define that southeastern plain for working lands. But uh, this is the southeast area subdivided into the Southern Plains ecosystem known as SP Eco and the Coastal Plain ecoregion, CP Eco. And then drilling down further than that, how do you look at a sort of unit that you can measure across this entire landscape? 
And the unit of measurement that we chose so we could compare one ecosystem with the next and um, look at incremental scales was the ecosystem services that were provided at what's known as a HUC, um, a, a hydrological unit classification. That is how the USGS divides the, the, the continent into little watersheds, go into bigger watersheds, go into even bigger watersheds, go into very large watersheds. And uh, if you look at the small gray scaling here, those are the smallest HUC 12 watersheds. They go into the blue scales, which are the HUC 10 watersheds, the larger green scales that are the HUC 8 watersheds, etc. So by measuring ecosystem services at the HUC 12 scale, we can then add them incrementally through these um, addition, uh, you know, through the step ups on the uh, HUC classification. So again, I'll remind you, uh, Archbold, Buck Island Ranch, LTAR is here, embedded within these HUC 10 watersheds, embedded within these HUC 8 watersheds. Um, embedded within the coastal plain and Georgia, the Georgia site, the Gulf Coast Atlantic plain here embedded within these HUC 10s, these HUC 8s, and then embedded within the uh, southeast coastal, uh, the southern plains ecoregion. We didn't look at every single ecosystem service you could look at. There are, of course, multitudes. Uh, we picked nine, and the nine we picked are relatively easy to scale, um, not only in the southeast, but also potentially across the nation if we wanted to scale up to the entire LTAR network. So look, we looked at a couple of aspects of provisioning, and we didn't actually look at the, the level of food production. We looked at primary production, um, net primary productivity, um, and we also looked at the annual variable in that. For supporting services, we looked at the measures of natural areas and the degree, uh, the, both in working, la working lands and natural areas, and the degree to which they um, either they cumulatively ended up with larger and larger fragments in the landscape. So these were indices of habitat fragmentation. We looked at the presence of imperiled species and the percent of lands protected for conservation. And finally, we looked at um, regulating um, uh, services, in particular, to what extent was nitrogen reduced, getting lower and lower nitrogen levels. So we're not looking for enhanced nitrogen loading downstream, but looking at reduced nitrogen loading downstream. Last year, I've presented findings that low intensity working lands actually make significant contributions. They are really enhancing landscape provisioning of ecosystem services and greatly complementing those of natural areas. And we, I'm going to talk a little bit further about that today. One of the challenges is, you know, can you scale up? So we know what productivity is like on Buck Island Ranch, and we know what productivity is like at, um, in Tifton at the Gulf Coast because that is measured. But what is productivity? This is an um, NPP, annual product, uh, the net primary productivity. Um, what is that like at these different scales? So the whole of the Southeast, these box flats, the central region, Florida sort of regional watersheds, Florida small watersheds around Buck Island Ranch, and the same thing for the Southern Plains and the Georgia watersheds. The first thing you'll see is Georgia is more productive than Florida in terms of net primary productivity. And you'll also see a tremendous variance in that. So can, um, can our two sites and the surrounding areas be product, be representative of productivity at all of these regional scales? We're supposed to be representing agriculture in the nation. And the answer is sort of. Um, these are uh, kernel density plots, and I'll look at the one on the left to tell you. These are the different scales at which we measured net primary productivity. Uh, so you can think of it as almost a sort of frequency distribution. It's a density of the, the measurements. And um, only 17% uh, of our scale-wise comparisons, nine ecosystem services, you know, seven, uh, nine, uh, nine scales actually were uh, similar to each other. In all other cases, they did not look like they were sampled from the same population. So you can see that the Florida small watersheds are actually pretty similar to the Florida, um, uh, the Central Florida Regional and the larger watersheds to some extent. 
But in Georgia, the sampling sites were very, very different from um, at the Georgia um, sites were very different from their regional equivalents. So not really representative. We went through all of our measurements. And in general, across the board, ecosystem services are not scaling up well, um, not scaling um, from local to regional to um, sort of uh, eco-regional scale. The other uh, thing we did is we actually went and compared, we had nine ecosystem services that could, could be compared to all the other ecosystem services at multiple scales. The question is, if there is a trade-off or a relationship between two ecosystem services, does the nature of that trade-off, is it similar at each scale? So I'm taking a simple example here, just one, but there were 279 pairwise comparisons here of a provisioning how much productivity are we getting versus what we want to achieve. Um, we want low nitrogen downstream loading. On the left here, we have what's happening in central Florida regional peninsula and what's happening at the uh, watersheds around, uh, you know, in the general region of Buck Island Ranch. You can see that as productivity is increasing, um, you know, nitrogen down steam loading is increasing. The relationship is similar, but the, the slope of the relationship is different, although not significantly different. In Georgia, a very different pattern, um, obviously um, both a, a linear, a, an increasing relationship, but in Georgia, um, for a huge increase in net primary productivity, and remember primary productivity is higher in Georgia than it is in Florida in general, we were getting um, uh, just a small, uh, uh, you could get a significant reduction in uh, nitrogen loading with a significant increase in um, net primary productivity. So it appears that as, um, you know, uh, in Georgia, what we are seeing is that if there is, um, uh, if there is uh, the increase in nitrogen loading, is less dependent on the, the productivity of the landscape than it is in Florida. We can see a similar question um, looking at a different, a different aspect of this. How does nitrogen loading change when we look at the ecosystem services, which is sort of the, um, an index of the increasing proportion of the landscape that is in natural lands and working lands? And this is for the watersheds around Florida, um, Buck Island Ranch in uh, green and the ones that are sort of regional level. You can see the slope of the relationship. So we get a decline in nitrogen loading, which is what we want to achieve as we have a higher and higher proportion of the landscape in natural or working lands. That relationship is much steeper in Florida, uh, much steeper in Georgia, with just a small increase in the natural, in the areas of natural uh, working land, you can get a significant reduction in the nitrogen loading. So scaling and the relationship is not the same. Um, uh, the relationship between these trade-offs is not the same at each scale. So in conclusion, um, and this is just a simple illustration, what we find in trade-offs among ecosystem services is first of all, um, the areas we pick on the left are the Florida sites, either locally around uh, Buck Island Ranch in the yellow or regionally around Buck Island Ranch here. This is a radar plot. It sort of shows the relative trade-offs or the relative synergies of six of those nine ecosystem services. So you get a lot of rare terrestrial species in Florida uh, around Buck Island Ranch, but you do not get very many rare ecosystem terrestrial species in general, if you look at the scale of the Southeast in blue or the central um, Florida uh, region in a sort of orange color. So these radar plates are a quick snapshot to show you that the trade-offs um, for the Florida, the trade-offs that you see in central Florida are very different at the local scale, Buck Island Ranch or region from the regional scale. The trade-offs in Georgia are more similar, but not identical, but are very, very different from the trade-offs that you see in Florida. So this tells us if we're looking at uh, um, balancing provisioning, food provisioning versus um, maintaining or retaining uh, ecosystem services such as flu uh, flood 
protection or for um, habitat for endangered species. These are difficult to scale and may have very different trade-offs at different scales. And I'll leave it at that point.